Hey there boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today Adopt Dog and I are gonna do a little bit more work on the 1985 Chevrolet C30. First thing we're gonna do is get the old windshield out so we can put the dash pad in and the cluster in and all that stuff. The reason I wanna get that done is because that windshield is wasted and I got a new windshield sitting here and I don't want that thing sitting around because somebody's gonna break it. So let's cut the old windshield out. We gotta take the wipers off and we'll go from there. These wipers, they got a little clip up here and then they got the squirter hose you gotta unhook. We'll get those out of the way. And they got this locking strip, which if you took that out, you could probably salvage the rubber, but we don't like used rubbers around here. So we're just gonna take a knife and cut it out of there. Get it out of the way. Should be pretty easy. And I got some suction cups to take it out if we need it, but try not to get any glass in your eye sockets because that ain't so good. Most definitely there's a tool for this, but we don't have it. So let's scar it all up. One down, one to go. Stay tuned for these guys on the website, Mortsky.com. We'll get them listed up there for you. You got a magnet on the end. How neat is that? How neat is that? There's that little clip I was talking about. These wiper transmissions, they call them, are splined. And then there's a groove here down at the bottom. That little spring-loaded clip pops in the groove. That's what keeps them from flying off at speed. Like I said, you can peel this strip out of here. There's the connector. Peel it out, and you can probably save this. But like I said, it's rubber. This chrome strip is not really looking real chromish anymore. And we don't want to fight it. We're not saving it. I think they were I don't know, 40 bucks for a new one. And they make two different styles, three different styles. You can get them with either this chrome or black. And then you can also get them with, I think that style that we got where it's just interlocking. So you don't need to put this in here. And that's what we got, because I think that's what was available. Because COVID even ruined windshield rubbers. Thanks a lot, whoever ate that first bat. No, 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 no! You can do it, Ozzy! Fight his freaking head off! No! Now is when you just... Whatever, fry all the rubber out of there, fish it out of there, but we're gonna cut the rubber, cause, you know, why not? Makes it a whole lot easier to take out. You should just be able to peel this little strip off here. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Got these handy dandy suction cups. Not the old Amazonia, since we're doing so much glass around here. They have pretty good latches on them. If you're looking for a knife, get yourself one of these what are they, Milwaukee Fastbacks. You got this built-in screwdriver in there. Put whatever bit you want in there. Phillips, flat, Torx. What do you guys call them, square ones in Kanukistan? One of them. It's got a bottle opener in the end, and then it's got a clip if you want to put it on your Keychain. It's a little bit bulky to carry around your pocket, but good knife. I lost my A Purvis blade in the snow somewhere this winter, so we went to a Milwaukee. These things are huge. I got big hands, bigger than my hands. And this guy with the suction cups. Oh, he's cups just making his way away. He wants police. no part of it, it looks like. Probably should clean the window off first, but of course we're not gonna do that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. It says use the cup on flat, clean, smooth, non-porous surfaces. Well, other than the uh, clean part, we're good to go. Oh yeah. Oh, we gotta unhook the antennae built into the windshield on these things. Oh, it unhooked itself, we're good to go. Square bodies, some of them got the antenna built in. Some of them are tinted. You got options. 
Guess the rubber is going to come with. Maybe. Maybe not. I prefer that it did not. There we go. Mojo, I got some glass for you. Probably better than the one you got in your pickup, huh? Probably is. I could use that someday. The good thing about windshields is they're, they're easy to store, right? She know what she went and did. What? She, <laughs> she went ahead to the dollar store. Uh-oh. And she bought some of them stickers, them new car stickers. New and car she, stickers? Yeah, and she put in her pickup. That scent, you know? Oh, the, the, the air fresheners. The air freshener deal, yeah. Yeah, so now you don't have to buy her a new car because she's got one. She got one, yeah. You just uh, smiled and nodded, right? Yeah. Don't argue with the boss. Looks like we got a little rust forming around here, so we'll have to clean that up. Looks like the last guy was in here put a little sealer or glue. Hopefully to prevent that from getting any worse. So we'll have to do that. You can see it should have came off nice and clean on that pinch well, but somebody's put some glue in there. So we'll clean her up. Maybe even put a little primer on there. Keep that from getting any worse. I got some fresh speakers and a stereo, so we should put those in while we're at her, eh? Mojo's working on some window wiring. They couldn't get the window down when they came to tint this thing the other night, so we got this window working, and we can get this rear one to go down, but we can't get her to go up, so it's got to be somewhere between either the switch or between the switch and the motor or the motor. These 80s windows. The electrical is terrible. Watch West Works sent us some schematics, and it's he said it's the craziest window schematic he's ever seen. And they were uh, pretty pathetic even when they did work back in the day. Well, we got the dash part. Let's put some new gauges in there, eh, Duff? Uh, work with the good folks at Classic Instruments. We've got a set of OEM looking digital gauges for this thing. Pretty excited. These work really good with LS swaps because then you can, well, 4L80 and 4L60s have uh, digital readout for. Uh, the speedometer and that's what these things take whereas the square bodies use a mechanical speedometer so there's ways to convert it over but let's be honest then you gotta make sure all your other gauges work and then plus we get a tack now so pretty excited about this we'll uh see how she looks hopefully it's not too much wiring i'm guessing we're gonna have to put some sending units in i don't know let's open her up find out we get some decals, Duff. What a deal. Classic instrument since 1977. There's our ooh, seven year warranty. We get the lifetime warranty upgrade for 20 bucks. Pretty cheap. These are our destructions. We'll have to read through those. Looks like they come with a GM sending unit, so we might have to swap that in. Hoping we can just use our stock sending unit. Oh. Yeah, here we go. Looks like, I assume that's our CAN bus connector, maybe. What, do we get candy? Dad's root beer. I'm guessing this is a oil pressure sending unit. Looks like that's the switch to uh, set her all up, toggle through everything. What do we got going on here? Another sending unit. Well, that would be our speed signal sending unit. It's going to convert your mechanical speedometer like on a Turbo 350, Turbo 400, 700 R4. Oh, and that's our connector for that. So we don't need that guy, seeing how we already have an electronic transmission. So we'll throw that in a spare parts bin. I'm guessing we're going to need to wire that guy in. We're going to have to uh, eat that off camera because Wes gets mad. When I eat on camera, we're going to throw those boxes away. That was from when we put the uh, ignition rebuild in old Reggie, which that thing needs a set of these as well. So stay tuned. Let's we'll see how this goes, but I think we'll be working with classic industries again. Looks like we got a connector on the back of this thing. We're going to have to do a little bit of wiring. It's not plug and play. Not surprised because that pickup does not have a tack. It uh, doesn't have a factory vehicle speed signal. 
So some of that's going to be different. I'm guessing the water temp. Oh, that's any units in here as well. So we're going to need to find locations on the engines for both. Oh, dang it! For both of these, and we shall go from there. Water temp sending unit. Oil temp sending unit. Looks like it comes with a couple of pipe fittings for the oil pressure sending unit. And I, I believe the LS has already got a water temp unit in it. So I don't know if this has got a different ohm rating, but that one's gotta be in there to tell the computer when it's hot, when it's cold and so on and so forth. I'm not sure if the ECU uses an oil pressure or not. We'll dig into that. We might have to tee in and put this two sending units for temp and for oil. Worst case scenario. I'm going to read the destructions. We'll check back with you. Now the fun part. I went through the manual here, figured out what wires I need. So we got blue, which is going to be our oil sender. We're going to tap into the factory wire, which I believe is blue on the GM. And we got to hook it up to the sending unit that we got to hook up on the engine, but somebody already put one on there and it's not at the back of the engine, like is standard on small blocks. It's actually on the uh, adapter on the oil filter. Pink, we got a 12 volt switch. So that should be uh, part of the GM side in the OEM harness. If not, we'll have to run a wire. Same thing with the ground, which is black. There's a purple vehicle speed signal. We should be able to get that from the uh, uh, aftermarket harness that are installed. If not, we'll have to run a wire or get it from the ECU. Same deal with the tack, that's going to come with the ECU. Fuel, we're going to have to get that from the GM side. Uh, the temp wire, that's going to be in, in the pigtail, but I think we're going to have to run a new wire up to the new sending unit. Gray is for our lighting, that should be in the GM harness. Same thing with the high beam and the left turn and the right turn signal. And then we got to hook the brown wire up to that setup button I was showing you, and the other side of that setup button's got to go to ground. And then the check engine light, we can either have a power or ground signal in it. I believe the harness should be sending a ground signal, so we're going to use the yellow black on that. So I'm going to pull the stock harness out, and we're going to do a little probing around in there and try to identify all these, G these GM ones. But I think, you know, like the tan is pretty notorious for being uh, tan on the uh, GM harnesses. Uh, same deal with pink and black, all that stuff. So hopefully a lot of these just line up. I think right hand is going to be green left hand is going to be yellow yeah. but fun stuff so i like taking notes like this uh, the previous owner was so kind to give us this installation harness or installation manual for that aftermarket harness he used and some of these signals are already going to be inside the car so yeah that'll be easy just splice the wires together on those but and then wes sent me a schematic for this uh, 85 harness and that is uh pure garbage hot garbage he said so we're just gonna do some probing around in there and see if we can test continuity and figure out what they are. Worst case scenario, we're gonna have to fish some wires. I think we're gonna end up fishing a new wire through for the coolant wire and then probably for the oil pressure. So unit wire. Moto's got her windows working, putting it all back together. You having fun yet? Yeah. Real fun, 80s electrical, good times. Would highly recommend. So it turns out that schematic that Wes sent was flaming garbage. So we just uh, did it the old fashioned way. And by old fashioned, we followed the ribbon wiring on the back of the OG harness and figured out where our temp is, our left and right, our fuel, what's H? Oh, high beam, gauges and oil pressure, where all that stuff is. So. Now we just gotta go on this connector here. Well, and then once I did that to double check, we got our power probe in here and we checked for power and ground, you know, cause some of them are power. That fuel, that's gonna be resistance and you know, the things. So uh, we tested for power on the left, right turn signals, um, power on the gauge lights. We didn't test anything on the oil and temp because you know, again, their resistance, but you get the point. You know what I'm saying? Double checked it. It's kind of like the measure twice, cut once type dealio. So now we're gonna 
nip the end of that harness. It would be really cool if they sent like a connector with with a whole bunch of pigtails on it. So if you were to ever go back, you could just pop this in there. But anyway, these uh, ribbon harnesses or backings, they're pretty easy to figure out what's going on, going on. You just follow the wire. Follow, 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 follow the yellow brick road. 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 Uh, in this case, it's gold. Uh, it's probably copper is actually what it is. We put up a, a, a driveway chime. Uh, so we can tell when people are, are coming and going, you know, because uh, we get a lot of unannounced visitors, unfortunately, or fortunately. And uh, yeah, that's what that noise is. Well, look at how corroded these some, some of these connections are. Yuck. Pretty nasty. So, we're gonna start cutting some wires. Duff is super excited about wiring, aren't you? Yeah, me too. Pretty excited about these gauges. Uh, like I said, we gotta, we gotta run a power wire and a ground wire. We'll probably just ground right to the body and then power will come off of the fuse relay center down there. And then for like our vehicle speed and our water temp and some of those other tack, those are coming off of the aftermarket harness. So it should be good to go. Right, Duff? Don't gonna be such an angry puppy. We'll get her uh, doctored up so we can go for an RID. Oh yeah, while I was gone, Mojo got the wood out of here, the plywood that was in the floor. He said that was a real bugger. And then he also cleaned up the glue a little bit and then laid out our carpet in here. He doesn't like the way the carpet fits, but uh, that's kind of how it fits when they come rolled up in a box this big and you got a carpet this big. So it's in there. Looks pretty good. Looks like the right color. Makes the door panels look that much crappier, but it's in. We still got to put holes for the seats and seat belts and all that good stuff. But slowly but surely, this thing is going to be good inside just let my tint guys know that we got the windows working we just wiggled some wires we don't know what's working i can't run that window with the master switch i don't know what's going on there it might be in the switch it might be in this harness it might be in the harness in between here and there i don't know but when duff's back there he can run it up and down i just can't roll it up and down for him you don't need thumbs to do that right duff so yeah hopefully we'll get our windows tinted right now let's get some let's get some gauges wired in as I cut these wires, I'm gonna record the colors on the GM side so that, you know, I know which one to hook them up to later on. All right, got all our wires cut. So now we can go take the harness off the backside of the new gauges, splice them in. You gonna handle that part? Easy peasy lemon squeezy, right, pal? Gotta lay them side by side, you know, just get the pictures for the old Instagram. A couple other things on here. Yeah, follow us on Instagram, Mortsky Repair. There's uh, these standoffs right here. They are adjustable for how your bezel mounts, so we gotta do that before we put it all together. And then the back side here, there's a couple settings. Right here is a switch that you set up for your resistance rating of your Fuel sending unit, we've got it set to two, which is zero to 90 ohms. And I think these are zero to 95 actually. So that's the setting we need. Uh, all those settings are listed in the manual. And then we're gonna unhook this and hook it up to our harness. There's a little switch here that's off and on. When you use the vehicle speed signal, the factory GM, when you have to flip this to on apparently. So we got to flip to on. This was already set at two. This was preset to off, so we flipped that on. Now we're gonna splice a few wires. We decided to take a little break from working in the shop, so we're out here in the wind. 
And this is the six cylinder Dodge Chrysler Mopar engine that we got running and uh, almost took my finger off. It was at this moment that he knew he fed up. And a faithful viewer has purchased this slash bartered it. So he's coming to get this. So I had to get it out for him. And while we're outside, let's go take a look at Mount Morski. You gonna come with or are you just gonna hide in the shade over there? Well, here she is. The uh, tire on the right side that I can see. Well, it's kind of off the bead, but there's still a couple feet of snow and ice underneath there. The right side, she's left side, I guess. Look at which way you're looking at it. Duff, ah, probably don't go underneath there. She's still a good three feet off the ground. It's May 2nd today. So anybody who guessed, you know, before that, sorry. But if you haven't guessed yet, don't submit multiple submissions. If you haven't guessed yet, send us an email. Sunnyhillauto at gmail.com. And in the subject, put the date that you think this thing is going to hit the ground. And if you're the lucky winner, we'll email you back. We'll get your shirt size. And we'll send you some stuff. Don't submit a second one if you've already guessed one. Because... We'll catch it because you know we got paid employees they're gonna comb through that with a fine tooth comb and, and find anybody but maybe he'll win a grape concord last tag to no way some terrible person already cut the catalytic converters off of it though there it is there's your mount mortski update it's now mound mortski she's getting down there and i'm all right with that other than the mud Jumping in mud puddles is always a good time though, right Duff? I don't know where he went. That expedition was completely buried. Well, you could see a little bit of the top, but you definitely could not see the old uh, bump side forward. All right, back to work. Need to take a break from doing electrical and I was sick of tripping over those four brand new tires by the door. So I dismounted all the tires, found out one of the rims, the holes was wallered out. Somebody ran it loose and then I had to find another rim. And that rim was rusty around the bead, so I had to find another rim. Of course, the ones that were on there were kind of rusty around the bead, so took them all into job erection. They got them blasted up real quick for us. And now that they're all nice and clean, we better put some paint on them. So, I don't like painting on the floor for bending over and over spray, and then you got to flip them. So I bought my old man a new cherry picker, because he says he's getting old and wants to not lift things manually anymore. So we got him this guy. Got it all together and I thought, you know, I got this expensive DOM tubing just laying around. So yeah, we got ourselves a little paint booth action going on here. So I'm gonna hang those up there and we're gonna prime them for sure. I don't know if we're gonna paint them or not yet, but at least they won't get rusty. Maybe we'll paint some white on them. Maybe we'll put some black on them. Maybe we'll paint them purple. You never know. Just got some mechanics wire, we looped her through the old valve stem hole. And uh, that way we should be able to pretty much paint the entire thing in one shot without having to flip it over or nothing. And hopefully this doesn't come crashing down on my noggin. Because that won't be good. There's some weight Ergonomics is key. <laughs> I'm in danger. All right, ready to do some painting. We doubled up our wire on the ends here. And we tied her a little bit better there, so. You don't wanna put your toes under it. Or your thumbs, if you got any. All right, let's lay down some paint. I really hope, I should measure the centers because the centers are different size diameter on the Fords and the Dodges than the Chevrolets. 
I should measure before I get them painted. I should have done that before I blasted it. Make sure that new rim, new to this vehicle, fits. Because that would be my luck. I've done that before. Blasted and painted wheels. Find out they don't fit. Learn from your mistakes. I should be one smart SOB. All right, one coat of primer down. Okay, let's be honest, the only coat of primer. And since they're two different uh, color primers, we're just gonna put some white on it. At least, we gotta do the inside and the outside because one rim sits this way and one's that way. So we might as well do the whole thing. And I'm an idiot. I got flat white primer. So I should have just shot it with this right off the bat. Oh well. It's got double cover technology, so you know it's good. rust out of Vernon Hill, Illinois? Who would have known? Made in America, even. What a deal. What a deal. Well, that spray is terrible. We got no go-go. Let's try the old air hose. Oh man, freaking paint everywhere. This might not end well. Uh-oh. Whatever. I think we just got a bad tip. It worked fine on the last can and I swapped it to this one and then it didn't work. Now it does. Just the tip. Mordsky's tech tip of the day. Eight dollar rust oleum. Not worth it. Well, pal, do you approve? I mean, they're white. Just terrible luck with paint today. You can see the shades different between the flat white primer and whatever. There's some Walmart white paint in there. You, well, I guess it's one way to get you clean is to roll in some white paint. You're a silly dog. I had some old Walmart white brand stuff that stuff was terrible back then and it's probably 10 years old and it's even worse now so i got most of it off my hands anywho we're gonna let those dry we're gonna go find something else to do eh duff i did notice on a couple of these oh yeah maybe we can show you can you read that yeah firestone accuride I think there's a date code. Yeah, 7 of 78. So I think that came off the other ramp truck we got. Maybe. There's a Firestone AccuRide. This is 82. So it must be original for the pickup. I don't know. Firestone AccuRide. I don't know. 82 is... I think they got a date code on there if you can figure it out. This must be the oddball because I don't see... Uh, that's a Firestone AccuRide. 
310778. So I'm guessing it's July 31st of 78. Who knows? Somebody could have swapped those wheels on there at some point. All right. It's time to have a snack, Duff says. Sandwich time. Well, that's right. Two are off that 78 because they mounted one up and didn't blast that one. Because that one was low to start out with. So I don't know how the beads got so pitted up on a pickup that was running and driving on the road. Crazy. Oh, we've got to ship some super scrapers out. Don't make fun of me for my, what you call it, my Reppard print. Uh, is that Reppard Duff? Yeah. Reppard print cheetah. I don't know. Mailers. Beggars can't be choosers. We run in the big city. The post office. Don't mind the wind. You can see those holes. Two holes, two there. Well, they're pretty much all wallered out, but there's a few that are worse than the others. That's what happens when you run your uh, lug nuts loose. Never mind that that tire's about to explode. All right, Duff. Let's go to the post office after we unload some wheels. Load up. Hey, get your super scrapers from us, Mortski.com. We gotta work on adding some other stuff on there. Like, we don't have the shirts yet, but we got, we got them little cute little screwdrivers like used to get back in the day from uh, your local hardware stores and whatnot. They got the magnet on the end and then they got the clip to go in your pocket and we got some old school keychains. Yeah, we gotta get that stuff on there. Mortski.com, go check it out. Maybe it'll be on there by the time this video comes out, but probably not too busy doing things. Should we check out Mount Mortsky while we're at it? I don't think we've given them an update in a day. So currently it is uh, May the 3rd and guess the day that the uh, Concorde melts and all four wheels hit the ground judged by us. I promise we won't cheat but send us an email uh, Sunny Hill Auto at gmail.com and in the uh, subject line of your email, guess the date. So yeah, it looks like we're down to about, I don't know, 18 inches on the uh, right wheels, but we're still a good three and a half feet up there on the left wheels. Oh, hey, look, there's the park light. wonder how that got busted. Whoopsies. Okay. We're gonna gain some gravel back and a little chunk of four by four even. Oh look, there's a whole roll cowers back there. All right, you wanna unload those wheels? No thumbs? Thanks a lot. Well, Duff, what do you think? Moment of truth. We did slide some little kicker speakers in here while we were standing around yesterday. I think your gauges are gonna work. Well, they got power and ground. Blinkers on. Fix that. You suppose we got a left blinker? Oh yeah. It's saying it's got a full tank of fuel. Which it should, because I think we filled it up. Okay, that's annoying. Zero force and four force. Come on, just put an E and an F. Voltage looks like it's about right. Yeah. Oil and temp are hooked up now. I did have to put the sending unit in, the adapter. I think it's like a PS12 or PS... I don't know. We had to put an adapter in for the temp to go to the LS. We got that in there, right, Duff? No, we're not going to go for a ride. we got to put a seat. Well, I guess we'll see if the tack works and the oil pressure. Here goes nothing. 
voltage is working. Oh. Well, according to this, it's got, well, I didn't use their oil sending unit. I used the one that was on the engine. It says it's got 80 pounds, so I think we're gonna have to swap sending units. I was, more, I was concerned about the fuel because they took out the, whatever, there's one tank in here and it's been rewired for the fuel pump. So I think we're good there. We're good there. I don't think our temp is working. We'll have to see that that comes up. I think I got the wrong sending unit for oil. Tack looks like it's working. Idling at 400 RPM, that sounds low. So maybe we gotta do something there. We might have the wrong setting. So we'll go check that out. Yeah, but I think uh, I think we're good to bolt it in for now. Only thing is uh, maybe tapped into the wrong wire for the temp. We'll have to see, get that up the operating temp and see what it does. But. I think we're good, pal. How do you like your new seat? He says, I love laying on new carpet and ruining it. Don't worry, I ruined it with all the dirt that came out of the dash and uh, those wires that we snipped off. Cool. Let's bolt that in. Oh, who wants some attention? Duff does. Look at this is a neat little trick. Use my dowel, found my seat hole. Get yourself a step bit or a unibit, is what I call them. Doesn't catch the carpet. <laughs> How neat is that? That's pretty neat. Boom, got your hole for your seat. Somebody told me about this at, I don't know, on my vacation to Puddins or Austin, Texas, but yeah. He said, yeah, it doesn't catch the carpet. Sure enough, now you know. Your uh, Morsky tech tip of the day. God, that's gonna be awesome. I used to just heat this thing up, you could tell. Look like a some type of addict, but heat that up with a torch and burner through but this looks way better way way safer gosh hope somebody uses that and they 18 other Dwayne's are gonna come like yeah I knew about that a long time ago all right so we're gonna do the back ones find the hole put some carpet on it Hey, thanks to whoever told me about that. I don't know if you watched the show. I think it was a, I think it was a fan, subscriber, viewer. It's probably one of Puddin's viewers. He's got all the subscribers, but you know what? We don't do it for the fame. We do it because, you know, we just love providing entertainment to you folks. Alright, I should be able to get her from there. Oh, okay. Hopefully. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Do you have any idea what he just said? We're gonna need a translator for Mojo. I ordered spares, I don't know why. But uh, we got some uh, Kicker DSC 350s. Those are what we put in the front there. They're three and a half inch 80 waters. High performance drop-in replacements. I don't remember what they were. Like 100 bucks a pair, something like that. We got spares, you know, cause we'll probably do another square body someday. But what I'm really excited about is this little guy right here. This is a custom direct fit radio. The old slide bar radio from uh, Custom Auto Sound. Fits 73 to 87 Chevrolets, up to 91 crew cabs. But you can hook up your phone to this thing. I think it's got Bluetooth. Uh, it's got a subwoofer output. It's got a mic, so you can take phone calls. And then USB, which, I don't know, not a stereo guy. But 
Uh, you can also, yeah, like I said, run an amp with this thing and I don't know, probably a CD changer. It's got the antenna connection. And here's all we got for connections. Yellow is going to be our constant power. Uh, blue one's for a power antenna and one's for the amp we're not going to use. Red is for key power. Black is for ground. So pretty much a lot of the same stuff that we wired up on the old uh, instrument cluster. And then this is going to be all our speakers here. Right front, left front, right rear, left rear. And since we only got two speakers in there right now, we're just going to do front left and uh, front right. So I'm going to go ahead and start wiring this stuff in. And uh, we listen to some tunes. Pretty excited to have some good tunes. That's one thing Puddin, he gets, he gets the good stereos in his stuff. Reggie's got an all right stereo in it too. But it's gonna make this thing that much nicer of a driver once we get a windshield in it. Tint boys came and they got the tinting all done. So that's pretty good. I did program the tack. You have to program it for a four cylinder because it's run off the ECU. Don't ask me why. And then something about low voltage. So I went in there and did the programming. The dash lighting works. The high beam indicator works so yeah i think everything's working uh temp gauge did start coming up so i think we got that right the only thing is uh i think i got the wrong oil pressure sending unit that or we have the only six liter ls with like 80 pounds of oil pressure cold so yeah it's an ls what do we need an oil pressure gauge for what do we need any of these gauges for on an ls pretty much just need a speedometer i mean attack just center to the moon loves it Okay, I'm gonna see what I can find in here. I'm guessing four of these are speaker wires probably the Two yellows and the two blues and then one of these is gonna be key power And we're probably gonna have to run a constant power. We'll run that down to our fuse panel and then A ground we'll probably just if we can't find a ground we'll just go right to the body But one of these might be a ground We'll find out one way or another so I got to going through this wire and we got our ground and our key power hooked up. We still got to do our constant power down to the uh, fuse relay panel. But there's four extra wires. Uh, has this thing got rear speakers? You know, because why wouldn't uh, every Cowboy Cadillac have rear speakers? And sure enough, over in the corner there, each side we got speakers. But also, we got a little five-ball action going on in here. So... Uh, yeah, that might get some of the smell out of this cab. Good stuff. I wonder what else is in there. Got him! Ha! Got him! This might be why the cab corner's peeking a little rust out. Anyway, we're gonna wire these up. And I think these are like a four by seven. We're gonna order some new ones of those guys up. And this thing's really gonna bump. Duff can bump in the back seat with his lady friends and I'll just chauffeur him around. All right, I think we got most of it. Why wouldn't I just stick a vacuum cleaner in there? Yeah, that would be smarter. All right, I'm gonna measure this and figure out what it is and get them wired up. No more jump scares. Oh, that ground is a little rusty and corroded. And oh yeah, the mice chewed the sheathing right off that ground wire. That's pretty handy. Look at what we found. Yeah, they're not four by sevens, they're four by tens. Same as they use in Suburbans. I may or may not have gotten this from Custom Auto Sound like a year ago. And uh, the Suburban got sold and we were cleaning it out. I was like, hey, let's put that stereo in the Cowboy Cadillac. So anyway, let's put their 4x10 dual voice coil speakers in. It's a model 3001 DVC. Yeah, this thing's going to be good. Scratch that, only one came in the box, so we're gonna put that in the center of the dash, and we're gonna order some new Sirwin Vegas, but back here, $44 on the old Amazonia. I'm sure these ones are fine. Now, since there isn't a circuit, originally, or on that system, for a front speaker, we're gonna tap into probably the front right speaker, because the wires are gonna run right by it, over to the right speaker, and then, uh, 
So our center front speaker is gonna be in our front right circuit. It'll be fine, right? What do I know about stereos? Man, we did some sketchy wiring on stereos back in the day as kids. But they worked a whole lot of, I think I used scotch tape a few times. A whole lot of twist together and electrical tape because we didn't know what butt connectors were apparently. But yeah, this guy just drops in right here. We're just gonna hook our wires up back here. Okay, not, not bullet connectors. What happens when you hook, you know, there's a negative and a positive on these wires. That doesn't fit very tight. Negative and a positive, what happens when you hook it up backwards? Anybody know? I think they work either way, don't they? Yeah, probably. All right, now we gotta tap into that circuit for that speaker. Oh, this will reach right over to the radio, so I'll just tap into him back here. He's peasy lemon squeezy. Well, guys, here it is. Uh, it's May 7th. This video is probably coming out on the 8th. Well, Morsky's really dwindling down. That was not a good spot to park the vehicles. But I don't think we're going to get this much snow. So uh, we got some standing water over there, but looks like everything's below the level of the wheel bearings. So we should be good. And here is the old Grape Concord. We got wheels touching the ground. Both of them on the passenger side. Can you tell I'm excited? But we still got a couple days. We got a pile of rain last night. I was out of town, but we got a lot of rain. Everybody tells me, you could tell by the way that it is. This is an Aspen. You can tell that it's an Aspen tree because of the way it is. We got, I don't know, a good foot and it's gonna take a while. Oh, because you know, the, the Concord is, is shading the ice and the snow, but we're getting close. So if you guessed prior to May 8th, unless we get a heck of a warm day tomorrow, just playing in the swamp, we probably shouldn't have that used oil jug sitting in the snow water, groundwater. That's the suburban that we had to dig down to. So I mean, that's how deep the snow was right there. And that all blew in. That wasn't snow that was stacked in. This is not going to be the driver's window. Oh, there's the mirror. You got a lot of help, pal. Got it. I think it duffs. Taking a big old duker on the snow over there because he doesn't know where to poop anymore. Yeah, we're getting close. I'm excited because then we can send some swag out to whoever guessed. If you haven't guessed yet, guess your date in the subject of your email. You send the email to sunnyhillauto at gmail.com and in the subject, put the date that you're guessing. And I'm excited to send somebody some swag or multiple people. Somebody's gonna win. Even if somebody doesn't guess the exact date, we're gonna pick the closest folks. And then I'm excited to pick this thing up and scoop it and put it back there out of my way. We're gonna have so much room for activities. Never mind that thing over there. You didn't see that. All right, I'm gonna haul some 92 door panels out to the trash and maybe burn some stuff even though our burn pit is uh it's a pool right now is what it is not good we got some spring cleaning to do all right let's get back to working on a screw cap all right guys the week is winding down i already told you it's sunday uh we're gonna finish off this video where we start it we're gonna we're gonna put that windshield in here and that stinky what dog is going to be of zero assistance? I got a feeling. So let's do this. Look at this dump. Oh, you could have at least washed the dust off of it. Well, just maiden voyage. Duff, just jump up on it and scratch the paint. Woo! She's the 1971 Raptor. Where's the license plate? Where are you going to the license plate at? <laughs> TBD. Oh, never mind. I see it. You got her figured out. Right there. God, it's too bad that you didn't put a windshield in that wasn't chipped. What is. You forgot to paint the back side of this headlight trim. You're just bashing my aerosol overhaul skills. And look at you. 
there's a little work to do. It's a fine tuning. It's a fine tuning. Oh yeah. Yeah. Antennae even. Power mirrors. Oh yeah. Pretty swanky. New black tailpipe. What's this bumper? The stock one? You just took the plastic off of it. In the step. Oh, look at those turn signals with the arrow. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I should have put them in backwards just to screw with people. Just to mess with people. And they all work. Why didn't you fill these holes? You got you gonna know, put trim in there? I don't know what I'm gonna do there yet. I'd like to get a better kit. Oh, oh you didn't want to mud that up real bad? No. Eh, you gotta put the emblems on it. Oh yeah. Maiden voyage. Third brake light. Duff wants to go for a rip in it, I think. Gooseneck? Oh, come on. Come on. Oh, yeah, you were talking about it, weren't you? There you go. Oh, Duff's checking her out. Oh, yeah. He's like, ah, don't mind all these muddy paw prints in here. Don't even, you don't even have a Miller light sitting in here. I'm surprised. Three point seat belts, even? What a deal. What a deal. Fires right up, I bet. No exhaust leak? Was that a fun job? Manifold? Yeah. <laughs> Buy a Ford three valve and do spark plugs, cam phasers, and the uh, exhaust manifold bolts. It's even with a bare chassis, it was terrible. Yeah, she looks pretty good. I mean, considering you're wearing khaki bibs, you know, I mean, you can't expect much. Well, I did that because there were so many suggestions uh, uh, after the previous video that I should maybe consider bibs. Really? So there was there was some oh, there was yeah. some crack showing. They they didn't like my crack showing. <laughs> that was a lot of ass spackle. A lot of spackle. I tell you what, whoever put that glass in did a great job. Other than they put the back in backwards and the front's got a couple of cracks and rock chips in it. We'll have to go for a ride in it someday when you get her all detailed up. Take it to its first show. Are you are you gonna have like a, a public unveiling somewhere? You're not gonna you know SEMA or I should. Yeah. They'd be impressed. Or PRI or I don't know. The, there's gotta be like the F one hundred nationals. Yeah. Now we're talking. We got we're gonna have to charge the AC up. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Cruise works? Haven't tried it. Should. I haven't tried it yet. Everything should work. Manual windows though, right? Oh, come on. You gotta kinda decide whether you want them down or up before you you, you take off. Oh, really? <laughs> the window cranks get in the way of the dash? <laughs> that's what she said. Yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> oh, I gotcha. Yeah, that would make sense that the uh, window crank, oh, that was, you didn't plan that out, did you? No. <laughs> you got it all together, you're like, dang it. Oh yeah. People are gonna wonder why you, you got your door open when you're going down the road to go up or down. Oh yeah, not bad. The, ne the next one will be way smoother, right? Yeah, something like that. These doors shut so much nicer than a 67 to 72 Chevy. Not bad for an aerosol overhaul. Good enough for the girls we go with, right? You got that right. Well, handsome Rob's here to help. He's got his plumbing outfit on. We got to get this plastic off this windshield here and the stickers and all that good stuff. And we're going to put the seal on the cab, but let me get this off there first. Now we're going to put our seal in place and we're going to drop our glass in.
Comment down below if you're a female and you watch Ford Ski Repair. Yeah. On a regular basis, not just this video. Yeah. Ah, we don't care. You watch it once. Good enough for the girls we go with, right? Damn right. That's my motto, that and everybody Wang Chung tonight. That and everybody Wang Chung tonight. Are we gonna have to do some cheating? You're terrible at this. I know I am, I suck. We suck. We suck again! Oh no! We suck again! Why is that way longer than it? That's what she said. Wait. I don't know how big this thing's gonna get. You better stand back. <laughs> Yeah, I guess we're gonna have to do some some shrinking, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's a lot. That is a lot. You don't suppose that's for like a 67 to 72 or something. 73 to 87. That's a lot. Yeah, that's I mean that's probably two inches extra. <laughs> that's bonus two inches. Well, I wonder if we can't, yeah, if we got to get it tighter in the corners. What did you do? I hurt myself. People love seeing you hurt yourself on the internet. Looks better. You just had to get the old windshield seal shrinker out. Basically, all we had to do was spread the lip on the back side and push it over that pinch weld. And you got to kind of push it together as you go around because it's plenty long. Now, I think we're just going to spray some glass cleaner in there on the edge of the windshield. And so we start with the top or the bottom. What do we do on yours? Well, let's avoid doing however we did it. I don't remember. Bonding. Great. That's pretty really light, this one, to be honest with you. It's because you're just getting more physically fit. Oh, these got, hold on. Something we gotta do with that antenna? No, nope. Is that in the winch? Yeah. Okay. All right. So do we wanna try to get it down in there? Yeah, I think so. Try the bottom first. How, uh, how is it on your side? Uh, I mean, are we pretty even? Yeah, left to right? Yeah. Yep. Here, try going down first. Down? Yeah. Sad in that I think it is too, but it's yeah. good. Get that bottom corner in so that it all. <laughs> Duff, what's your problem? How, how does your side look? I mean, it looks like mine could it could almost come my way just a little bit. Oh, really? Yeah, that'd be all right. I think it'd be, I think it'll be fine. But I don't know. Oh yeah, that's way too far. Okay. Should be good right about there. Yeah, I got about two thirds of the way up the top. No, I think we gotta move the top in and then come back to the sides. You just didn't have doors on it either. Yeah. That was easier to... Success? Well, just when I think I'm getting somewhere, I end up going backwards. It's like you almost gotta get the door to the tools. I think you're on top of the toolbox. There. I don't think I'll ever pick up this as a profession. You gonna stick the plumbing? Yeah. Pizza delivery? I got the pants for it.
think you gotta get the top, Rob. Okay. And then this will drop. Get this, and then that'll just drop right in. Okay. I'll try. That's all I can do. So, how do we do that? What's that? Get this lip, this interlock to... Lock. Is that what yours had? No, it didn't have that double lip. Oh, that goes over the top of the... Or it goes in... You sure yours didn't? No. Where's that? Grab the spray away, go over all of it. So this one's got to tuck up underneath the other one, huh? Yeah. But I'm not the. Uh, I don't want to make it any easier or anything. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to have arthritis by the end of this job. Well, this makes up for the windshield going in so much easier. I thought Chevy had it all figured out, but they do not. Well, this isn't how the factory ones went in. The factory ones have a <clears throat> seal that whatever that you roll or uh, install on this lip instead of having this interlock. So this is this is a, yeah, uh, an improvement. Well, some guys like them. They're easier. They're supposed to be easier to install. Yeah. Right. Like I said, when, I, when that buddy of mine, he's got, he's got one of these that's got like a ball, just a round ball in there so it doesn't poke through. Yeah. He just, whoosh, just pulls it right around. So if we drill a hole in the, in the ball bearing. Yeah, that'd be a piece of cake. Yeah. Like nailing jello to a tree. Are you uh, regretting stopping to show me your new pickup yet? Uh, that was a long time ago. <laughs> My life is nothing but regret. This is one of many. You know, I was making some progress over here. No, no, I can't. I can't. What's that? I was making some progress, and now I can't seem to uh, figure out what the hell is. One eternity later. Handsome Rob had to get back to his three uh, Stooges, his Springer Spaniels at home, so he took off. And I just ordered the, there's a little tool, kind of like this thing, but it's got a ball on the end of it and you just push it in there. And uh, that's what you, my glass guy used on the last ones that he did. I think we did these in, I think we did Casper, my white short bed. Uh, we did Chins short bed, the double D. And then we did uh, the 75 Blazer as well. And there might've been another one, but we did a bunch of these windshields. Uh, Last Christmas break, two Christmas breaks ago. Anyway, and uh, what you gotta do is, there's this little flap here, and you gotta push that inside of that groove so that it's like this. And it is just painfully slow going. I got from here up to here, and then a little bit up there, so, you know, maybe 20% of it done. Of course, this is the easy stuff because it's right over here. It's gonna be more difficult as you get further away. So it's not going anywhere. We're just gonna leave it like that for now until that tool shows up in the old Amazonia. Uh, I thought about making one, but I really don't have a 
good way of making one. I thought, you know, if you had a ball bearing that you could somehow stab over it and tack weld it on there, but I don't have any ball bearings laying around. You know where there's any ball bearings laying around, Duff? Yeah. So it's good enough for the girls we go with for now, and we still got plenty of other work to do. We gotta put the dash in and some other things. That is where we're gonna end it, because we gotta get this content to Chin so that he can wrap up the video. But yeah, we got the custom auto sound, awesome product. That's gonna be really freaking sweet. We gotta put some speakers in the back yet. I got those on order, the old four by tens. We got the four by 10 and the dash put in. We got the classic instruments. Gauge cluster in there, it's pretty much all working. I think we gotta put a different oil sending unit in there. And we gotta calibrate the speedometer. Uh, we gotta put the dash pad in. We got the carpet all in there. We got the seat back in there and mounted. We gotta do the seat belts yet. We gotta do the sill plates. We got plenty of stuff to do and we got some other surprises going in there. So, uh, I mean, if you're looking at getting classic instruments, those gauges are super easy to install. They're super nice looking and they're uh, well worth the money. I know, I know you gotta pony up to get them, but if you're doing an LS swap, and you want to get a tack and you want to get some nice clean new looking gauges and you want to get a digital speedometer and all that good stuff plus you're going to have readouts for you know your check engine light and all that stuff really good upgrade um, same thing with that, that classic auto sound it looks stock but then you can have bluetooth so you can take calls and you can uh, stream music from your phone or you can just plug your phone directly into it you can hook up an amp i really just like a stock looking radio in there as opposed to you know hacking up the dash for a cd player or whatever it is and we do it's nice to have some tunes in your vehicle and i plan on putting a lot of miles on this thing and we're going to pull a trailer because we got the bags in the back and we got a six liter and four l80s this thing's going to be a towing machine so uh, yeah there's going to be some other surprises we're still looking for a back seat so if you got another one of these matching bench seats hit us up mortski repair at gmail.com this one is not for sale so don't look for a price and don't hit us up to buy it yeah Anyway, that's about it. Uh, yeah, I'm guessing by next, I'm not going to say anything, but I'm hoping by the next video that uh, Mount Morsky is going to be gone. Uh, Great Concord is going to be on the ground. So get your guesses in on when that thing's going to hit the ground if you haven't already. Don't double submit your guesses if you uh, already have submitted. So good luck to those who have already submitted. And I think that's about it. Uh, yeah, we get a little bit more progress. These projects drag out, so I appreciate you bearing with us. Thank you very much for watching. Check out our other videos. Check out our merch. Uh, you can get us up and get some scrapers, and we're going to have our own merch coming up very soon. But uh, there's a link for our current merch. We're going to have uh, the merch brought in-house. Hopefully, we get some uh, shirts this week. And then once we get that set up, they'll be available on mortski.com. Give us a couple weeks to get it set up. So, yeah, when we get that stuff available on the mortski.com, I will let you know. Um, so if you're thinking about purchasing something, maybe hold off. But uh, otherwise, it's really great products that we have out there currently. That's what I'm wearing. But most importantly, remember, it doesn't matter how you get it done, as long as you're having fun. Putting glass in, pulling electrical, always a good time. Always a good time, especially troubleshooting it. Oh, and we got the windows tinted. How neat is that? All right. See you next week. What are we going to work on now? Also, don't be afraid to put glass in by yourself. It's super easy. I mean... So easy two cavemen can do it.
took a little break from working. Is this dirty? Is this clean? Is it scratched yet? Probably. Remind me to get the screen covers for these that stick on and peel off like bread says we need. All of the cars. Traffic, traffic. I love traffic. Oh, let's move the noisiest engine stand we've got in the whole shop around while you're trying to record.